placed it into his abdomen, and he fell upon his own sword. And then he said, Sadaqa Rasul. He said, indeed, the messenger is truthful. Indeed, he is truthful. Because he understood straight away this, this, this companion. He understood straight away, without any further explanation. Allah said, لا تقتلوا أنفسكم إن الله كان بكم رحيما Do not kill your own self for indeed Allah is with you most merciful. He understood that you don't kill yourself. So he stood, he put the sword into his abdomen, fell upon his sword, killed himself. So he said, indeed the messenger was truthful. And then he said, وَمَا يَنْتِقُوا أَنِ الْحَوَى He does not speak from his desire. In, 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 in imitation of the ayah where Allah said, وَمَا يَنْتِقُوا أَنِ الْحَوَى إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوهَى That he, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, he does not speak from his own desires, but rather it is revelation that is conveyed to him. Revelation informed the messenger of Allah, Allah informed him that this individual would end up in the hellfire. So when he killed himself, the companion realized that is the reason for him entering into the hellfire. And this is a man who went into the battle. On the side, alongside the messenger of Allah, killing the idolaters, killing the enemy in a conventional warfare. And yet he's in the hellfire. So what about these individuals? What about these individuals? So Shaykh al fawzan from the major scholars of the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, he says that these individuals, they kill themselves because they are desperate. And they despair. And Allah forbids the person to despair in his Lord and the mercy of his Lord. And as Allah said in the Quran, that, those, that only those who despair are the ones who do not truly believe in Allah. Who despairs? The one who does not truly believe in Allah. He is the one who despairs. So the Muslim should never despair. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and, and, and knowing who these people are, the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described them in various verses, in various uh, traditions or, or, or prophetic traditions of the Messenger of Allah. In one tr- tradition he said, يَقْرَؤُونَ Quran. لا يجاوزوا هناجرهم أو هناجرهم He said صلى الله عليه وسلم that they will recite the Quran but it will not go beyond their necks. They will recite the Quran they will not go beyond their necks. In a narration he said that they will recite the Quran they will recite the Quran but their faith will not go beyond their collarbone. Meaning that which they are upon is not true faith. It is not faith. It is not Iman. And their Islam will not go beyond their collarbone. And he said, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. He said, يَمْرُقُونَ مِنَ الْإِسْلَامِ They will exit Islam. كَمَا يَمْرُقُ سَحْمُ مِنَ الرَّمِيَّةِ Just like they will exit Islam, just like an arrow leaves the bow. They will exit Islam, just like when you fire an arrow, the arrow shoots out of the bow. This is how, with this, this is how they will exit Islam. And in narration he said, and the arrow does not return to the bow. Once you shoot the arrow, the arrow doesn't now do a U-turn and come back to the bow. Now they're out, they're out, they don't come back. This is their mentality. This is their mentality. And the Messenger of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, said, Indeed, he said, there is, a, there is a group of people that will appear. There is a group of people that will appear. From the progeny of this man, the man who stood up in front of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and rebuked him. He rebuked the Messenger of Allah and, and this, this is the root of their evil of rebuking the Muslim ruler and starting the revolution against him. So these renegades, the Messenger of Allah said that from his progeny will come a group of people. From his, from his progeny will come a group of people. They will recite the Quran and it will not go beyond their collarbone. And in a narration beyond their throats. They will come in and out of the religion like an arrow leaves the bow. And in a narration he said, and by Allah, he said, I swear by Allah, if I was alive, and they were to appear in this manner, I would slaughter them with the slaughtering of the people of Ad, which was a tribe that Allah completely annihilated in the Quran. It was from the, from the tribes that came before the coming of the Messenger of Allah, an ancient tribe that was destroyed due to their evil. So he said, I would kill them and I would fight them, just like the killing and the slaughtering of Ad that is mentioned in the Quran. And all of these narrations are authentic, some of them in Bukhari, in Muslim, in At-Tirmidhi, in Abu Dawood, and in other books of Hadith. 
and in narration, the Messenger of Allah said, indeed they are the doves of the hellfire. They kill nar. Why? Because look at the evil that they spread. They think that they are in paradise. One of them when he goes ahead to plant a bomb, to kill himself. Imagine what's going through his mind. The concept of paradise and hellfire is common to many faiths. Christians believe in the concept of paradise and hellfire, well most of them. Jews believe in the concept of hellfire and paradise. Muslims believe in the concept of hellfire and paradise. So the concept of hellfire and paradise in and of itself is not alien to many of the faiths. But look at the, look at the, look at the mindset of some of these people. The mindset is what? That if I now go out this morning, strap myself, and I strap myself with, 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 with Semtex or with any explosive, and then I get onto a bus in Tel Aviv, or a bus in Jerusalem, or I walk into a, a, a rank of police officers who are queuing up to collect their wages, to feed their wives and their children in Iraq, if I stand amongst them, and I kill myself, and I kill them, and I kill their children, that tonight I'll be in paradise. Look at the sickness. It's not the concept of hellfire and paradise that bothers us, because we believe in hellfire and we believe in paradise. But look at the sickness in their minds, that they believe that to seek nearness to the creator of the heavens and the earth, the one who from his mercy sent the prophets and the messengers, as a mercy from himself, that they actually believe that if I get onto a bus, anywhere in the world, whether it be Jerusalem, or the tube, or whatever, or if I stand in a row in Iraq, of people who all they want is to get a job, to stabilize their country, and to feed their wives and feed their children, because they're not getting food, they're not getting electricity, they're not getting water, some of them, because they're poor, they've got no jobs. And he actually believes by killing them, that he, by tomorrow evening, will be in paradise. What sick mentality is this? By killing himself. And the Messenger of Allah said, Who up in Nar? He's in the hellfire. Who? The one who killed himself is in the hellfire. So we don't say that he's going to be in paradise. Rather we say that Allah has threatened him with the hellfire, not with paradise. He has not been promised paradise. Rather he has been promised and threatened with the hellfire in reality. This is what he has been promised with or threatened with. So this is the reality. Jihad is not to be done in this manner. So how is their slaughter? Question again that Shaykh Abdul Muslim Al-Abbad asks from the scholars of Medina in Saudi Arabia. How is their slaughter and killing and murder and destruction? How can this be considered jihad? By which intellect and which religion? Because it's not Islam. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa did not wage, he did not raise the sword against the mushrikeen in Mecca and that was the most sacred site in Islam. When he migrated to Medina, then he had the Islamic government or the Islamic state. He was the ruler. He had the apparatus of what we would regard today of government. He had an army. He had people who were appointed. And then he started appointing emissaries and government, uh, emissaries and apparatus of government. Sending an emissary here, sending a governor there, sending people here, sending an army here. That's when jihad was in, that's when those verses of the Quran, that's when they started to be revealed. That's when they started to be revealed. To be implemented by the government. Likewise the verses of the one who sins, or the one who transgresses, or the one who does a crime, or commits a crime, such as theft or stealing, to be implemented by the government. Not the law to be taken into anyone's hands themselves, and claim that I am the one who is the lawmaker, or the implementer of the law. And all of this, what do they do? They say, we are doing this, why? Because Allah has said, وَمَّنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْكَافِرُونَ That whomsoever does not judge by Allah is revealed, then they are the unbelievers. And they forget that there are two other verses also in the same chapter. Whomsoever does not just by Allah has revealed power, humul fasiqun, that they are the sinners. So a person who does not just by Allah has revealed, then true. Sometimes he can be sinful because